Hickok 45 here. We're gonna talk about lead in your barrel today. Especially when you're shooting lead bullets. Yeah, let's put that sixth one in there, take a couple of shots, see if we can lead up this barrel a little bit. <laughs> By opening and uh, waking up the gong, how's that? Yeah. Oh yeah, let's do that again. <laughs> Wake him up. Maybe he can do a little buffalo hunting. <laughs> little ram hunting, sheep hunting. Shot high. Pop. <laughs> did he fire five or did he fire six? All right, so got me some game over there. Uh, let's get a little game right here. Woo! <laughs> oh. You better not tell anybody I missed that with a uh, eight inch barrel. Yeah, I think I have another one, so let's put it on the gong. Yep, sure did. Uh, of course, the length of the barrel doesn't really matter that, that much in terms of accuracy. It helps a little bit, the extended sight radius, but it, it's still the trigger control and all that, isn't it? So yeah, we're gonna talk a little bit about lead. I've been meaning to do this for a long time and uh, I've hesitated to do it. Uh, it's a little bit controversial, uh, but only if you don't hear me well, okay? You don't get right what I'm saying. There are so many solutions to getting the lead out of your barrel. And then you know what that means. When you shoot cast bullets like these, that's what these are. They're just lead bullets, okay? So it leaves a little lead residue in your rifling, all right? And the more of them you shoot, the more you get, generally speaking. Uh, these are jacketed bullets, so you don't get leading. You may get some copper residue, but you're not likely to get lead residue, even though they're lead under the copper. Unless your jacket is so thin or something, but you know, just generally it's not an issue with jacketed bullets. And maybe all you shoot are, uh, you know, like nine millimeter rounds and that kind of thing. You don't even shoot cast bullets or, you know, lead. Now, most bullets are lead. So, but when I say lead bullets, I mean these, you know, the cast bullets, okay? And they are hard cast, but you still get some lead residue. You can't, can't avoid it. Generally, they are cheaper to shoot. Uh, and your big calibers, a lot of people that have shot a lot of 45 ACP, 44 mag, 45 Colt, all those uh, have shot a lot of cast bullets. And many of you shoot a lot of them, buy them by the thousands like I used to do and still do. And they're easier on your bore, they're less expensive, uh, they're more historical in a lot of ways, you know. I mean, you know, 45 Colt, back in the 1800s, that's what a bullet looked like, you know. And uh, uh, I've seen some old Westerns or movies where they're not old westerns, but movies where they're loading a jacketed round into a Colt 45 or a 4570, you know, and it's like supposed to be 1880. And I don't think so. So lead has always been around. It's always a uh, you know, bullet of choice, you know, material because it's soft, needs to be something soft. That's why even under jackets, you know, you got the soft lead generally. There are some solid copper bullets, but most for the most part, there's lead in there, all right? But if it's jacketed, you don't have an issue very much. Okay. Uh, like I said, I, there are so many different methods. You've got the Lewis lead remover. I have used that as kind of a ramrod with a piece of screen on it and stuff, and back and forth, back and forth, get the lead out. Uh, I went online, looked at some forums, and there are about 18 different suggestions people use. The, uh, the uh, what's it, the little copper, they're made, made for dishwashing, I think. The little Brillo pad type of thing made of copper. I forget what the name is. Uh, Chore Boy, yeah. Uh, it needs to be solid copper. People tear off pieces of those, put them on a brush, and run them back and forth and through the bore with your, whatever your favorite bore cleaner is. There's bore cleaner that's, that's considered lead remover, and it's really powerful stuff. And it's supposed to loosen up the lead too. Uh, a lot of bore cleaners, they all, to some extent, will loosen up the lead. I think some take longer. You know, I, I use Balsol a lot. It seems to, to work, it's not immediate. Uh, it seems to cure the bore to where it doesn't pick up as much lead, unless it's my imagination. 
and there may be a hundred of them out there that do better. I don't know for sure. I'm not an expert. I, I shouldn't probably even be doing this video, but this video is not on all the various, it's not a rundown on everything that, uh, and how it works and all the choices necessarily. There are a lot of choices. Do your research if you're having a lot of lead, leading problems. You're shooting a lot of cast bullets, okay? Now, what I wanted to bring to you mainly was how I sort of keep it out. I don't, I don't have a lot of leading problems in my barrels and I shoot cast bullets a lot too, okay? What I have done since 1973 when somebody suggested it to me, I didn't know anything about it and, and, and it's one trick that works for me, but you've got to do it right. If you have a lot of lead buildup, if I stood here and shot a couple of hundred rounds of lead bullets and they're pretty hot, I would have a lot of leading in the barrel probably. And I wouldn't recommend my typical method. So if you have a lot of leading in your barrel, forget it, this is not my recommendation. However, if you just have shot 40 or 50 rounds or 75 or whatever, it uh, shouldn't be a problem unless your specific gun, you know your barrel, you're, you're firing better than I do. Uh, but what I do, here's the punchline, here's the bottom line. When I shoot some cast bullets, uh, and I might have shot, I'm not going to shoot that many, I'm, I'm just going to shoot those 12 I shot. I will, I, what I will do is uh, I'll shoot some jacketed rounds through the firearm before I quit. I make it a point to have some jacketed rounds with me and it, it doesn't matter what kind they are you know not going hunting with them or anything like that they could be full metal jacket or anything and preferably they're and they usually are something the same bullet weight that i normally shoot because i like keep everything the same kind of power factor and weight but so uh for example this is all i'm going to shoot this firearm today i wouldn't have to shoot six of them probably but uh, i will right now Boom, because I think the gong needs more attention. <laughs> I really do. Y'all know this is my favorite 44 Magnum I've had since 1974. I bought it new. If you're new to our videos, you know, you might not have been aware of that. I think I have one more. Let's get the cowboy. <laughs> yeah, I've been. I have about seventy to seventy-five thousand rounds through this firearm. Most of them are cast bullets. So for the naysayers who say this doesn't work, it's not smart. It it uh, damages your rifling. Uh, bad for the gun. It'll make it inaccurate or whatever. Whatever. Uh, guess what? I've been doing it since 1974. I tend to. I tend to base my opinions, I think in general, on my own experience, my own observations, my own thinking. They might be wrong sometimes, but I base things on, on experience for the most part. Not what the majority of people say, or the minority of people say or think. It's my experiences with things. And I have uh, 44 years of experience with this firearm. It's just as accurate as it's ever been. You've seen it in action quite a lot. And what I have done over the years is I have not scrubbed like crazy on that bore. When I shoot cast bullets, which is mostly what I've shot, I always have uh, a few jacketed rounds. If I'm going to go out and shoot, I don't do that as much anymore, eh? a couple hundred times, yeah, after I fire 50, I'll shoot three jacketed rounds through it. it kind of cleans out the lead from where you were. Now, it doesn't, I got this open, of course. See, that bore. It's hard for you to see it, but it looks pretty good in there. I don't see any lead. I don't know if you can tell. You see residue from powder and everything. But, uh, it, I mean, it's clean. I'll run a patch through there. That's all I need to do. So I've taken the easy way out. Let's put it that way. I'm not recommending you to do this. I'm just saying this is what I do. Okay? This is what I do. Again, you don't want to do it if you've got a ton of lead in there. But think about it. Uh, one of the most dangerous things we can do, of course, is to have a squib load or to have a barrel plugged or a barrel really dirty and then fire a bullet through it, right? So you could actually, uh, an old gun or something your grandpa has or some gun you buy somewhere, an old gun, you want to check the bore. It could be really leaded up badly, you know, especially 22s or, or whatever it might be. And you want to do a lot of scrubbing, you know, get that thing clean. 
okay? But if you have control of the firearm and you know what the history of it is and how it, how it does, you know, it's, it's not a problem for me, it never has been. Uh, so I just keep some jacketed rounds. I brought out a couple of props. These are 4440s. Not many people load 4440 in jacketed ammo, <laughs> factory ammo. That stuff runs about, wow, a couple of bucks a round, okay? But I keep a couple boxes of that, whatever I have to pay for it, because I have three rifles, I guess now, that fire 4440. And, you know, almost all the ammo you're gonna find for that is going to be cast bullets like this. And, but I still, I forked over the bucks, and when I shoot that rifle 20, 30 times, I run three or four of these through it. I just, yeah, it's not that often. You know, I don't even go through a box of it a year. You know? And that, that gets almost all the lead out and makes it easy to clean. This is what I do, okay? Again, sorry ATF, I'm not doing anything illegal. I, uh, I don't, we get a lot of traffic from uh, the hospital helicopters and also uh, Fort Campbell, it's kind of neat, but that's not Fort Campbell, but quite often we'll see Blackhawks going through, sometimes Chinooks, it's kind of neat, we always wave to them. But uh, it's, uh, as I said, you don't want to do it if you get a lot of lead. If you're going to shoot your 4440, you know, a couple hundred times, uh, you know, but just check the barrel. If you see cakes of lead in there and the rifling is really caked up, maybe you don't want to shoot a jacketed round through it because it's, it's maybe creates too much pressure, all right? Could have problems, don't do it. So if you're going to do the, use this method, and I'm not telling you to, but I always make sure I do it periodically, like when I'm shooting, you know, every 50 rounds, run through a few of it, keep shooting, whatever. So I don't ever overdo it with the cast bullets before I run the jacketed rounds through it. But it makes my life so much simpler. It works. I mean, it works well every time. It's like my, rather than dragging something through there all the time and working on that bore, uh, you know, I just do it the easy way. I pull the trigger and, and uh, drag something through it, namely a jacketed bullet, okay? It, it just works. Now, some guns are worse than others. Uh, if you shoot 357 Magnum and you're shooting a hot round, depending on your load, if you're shooting a really hot round, and with, with cast bullets, it's not recommended to shoot them at 2,000 feet per second or something, uh, then they'll lead even more. So it depends. Hot 357 could lead more than this would. So it's up to you and what you're shooting if you use that method. One last thing I was gonna say, when I started shooting cowboy action with the Colts, uh, I noticed I was getting a lot of leading and I didn't have any, I almost couldn't find any uh, cast or jacketed rounds at that time. And I was just getting a lot of leading. It kind of bothered me. I decided uh, maybe I should shoot the Colts. I don't like wearing those things out with lead, loose lead removers and you know the brushing and constant brushing, trying to get the lead out of it. But I, shortly after that, I switched to black powder shooting in, in my cowboy action shooting. So I was loading black powder in my 45 Colts. And I noticed I wasn't even letting. I'm still not 100% sure whether the black powder was just better about that uh, or it was the uh, wads, because I, I usually use some kind of wad, a lubricated wad or something, uh, some kind of filler in the case when you're shooting black powder between the bullet and the, you don't have to and the powder. And I was using these wads like this. I put the powder in and then put the wad in there and then seek the bullet. And I discovered, I think that was most of it. I was just not getting any leading because the back of the bullet, the base of the bullet couldn't melt, you know, from the heat of the, the ignition of the powder and everything. I just wasn't getting leading. And that was really nice. So then it occurred to me, being the genius I am, when I started loading regular ammo, smoke, or resumed i've always loaded uh, you know smokeless powder 45 colt rounds i say you know what? i don't shoot thousands and thousands of them i'm just going to make sure i got plenty of these wads and i just added a step to my reloading even with smokeless powder and i started putting that wad in before i put the bullet in uh, on those and same thing I, I don't get the leading that i used to i don't do that with 44 magnum though 44 on this uh so anyway for what all that's worth uh your lead bullet gets hot and it's just gonna leave some lead, no way around that. And I won't get into all the junk science about lead. You know, there's people that, you know, that's just, that say, make crazy statements online about lead and, you know, and, and all that. People shooting lead, how dangerous that is. And there's just a lot of junk science there. Uh, hopefully you're drinking water that's been tested, right? <laughs> you know? But, uh, you know, if, if 
if if shooting a bullet at the local police range or if you live near a a civil war battlefield like a lot of us do or uh, any kind of shooting range a skeet range or whatever you know we'd all be dead you know from from uh, from the lead it's you know it's just being put back into the ground and we don't get into all that but lead is not something you want to have around kids you know want it in their mouth and you know it, it can be uh, damaging it's not healthy but there is a lot of crazy overreaction to it but uh, so that's really not what i'm getting into so lead in your barrel uh, it works for me. It's something I have done for a long time. I'm not telling you to do it. You'll see some people posting how stupid it is, probably, because I've seen people, you know, really highly recommend against it. Uh, but I think where they're coming from is, and I understand it, you don't want somebody to get the wrong idea. Like, I can go out and shoot all day, all the cast bullets I want, and then just run some really hot 44 Magnum or 4357 Magnum through my barrel and no problem. And that probably is not a problem uh, unless you have a lot of leading, okay? Because it can increase the pressures. So if you're gonna do it, I recommend you do it like I do it. And just every, after every, whatever, 40, 50 rounds or something, unless you're getting an inordinate amount of leading, okay? So just keep track of it. But I always keep cast bullets, and I, and I shoot a lot of cast bullets. I always keep jacketed bullets is what I'm saying. Uh, whether it's 44, 357 Magnum, uh, 4440, uh, 4570. I'm thinking of the rounds that I shoot a lot of cast bullets through, and that would be 44, 45 Colt, 357, uh, 4570, uh, 4440. What am I forgetting? Uh, I shoot a lot of cast bullets, and I always have, and all those. And I have a lot of firearms, so I just keep some jacketed rounds around. I even load some uh, 44 Special jacketed rounds just for that purpose. I keep some around. Because, you know, a box of 44 Special jacketed ammo is usually pretty expensive. And I loaded up a bunch of them uh, years ago with jacketed uh, bullets. They don't have to be full metal jacket. They just need to be even half jacketed or whatever. And just for that purpose, when I'm shooting a 44 Special, and when I finish shooting 30, 40 rounds, shoot a few of those through it. And it makes the gun clean very simply. I'm not digging lead out. I never am. Because I keep, I keep, I make sure I have jacketed rounds for that purpose. Okay? So, uh, I, that's about it, I guess. Just uh, it's, and that's mainly what this was about. The trick I use, uh, and if that is a trick, a lot of people do it. I mean, somebody told me about it in Franklin, Tennessee, when I first got into shooting and hand loading. You know, if you just have some jacketed rounds. So, but you'll see people both ways on that. And but I think, in my opinion, is if you do it, uh, you know, smartly, it works just fine. Not that I'm that smart, but I've been doing it. I've been using that system since 73, 74, and I will continue. I don't care what anybody says, uh, really. I really don't. I have 44 or 45 years of using that method successfully, okay? Because I do it, I think, in the smart way. Again, though, I ain't that smart. Life is good. Oh, I didn't see that. I was just playing my favorite country and western song. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you to check out our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. You can find them at sdi.edu. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can become uh, get an associate's degree in firearms technology or become certified in uh, gunsmithing. So if you're interested in a career like that, please go check them out, sdi.edu. Also, while you're on the internet, please go to hickok45.com and see everything we have over there. Um, we have all of our social media links, all that kind of thing, like, like uh, full30.com, um, links to our store. We have t-shirts now that you can, you can acquire for yourself through Bunker Branding. Uh, Matt from Demolition Ranch's new company. Um, it's Hickok45 on Twitter, just to save you the time from going to the website. Um, Hickok45 on Facebook. Uh, the Real Hickok45 on Instagram. Um, there's a John Hickok YouTube channel. There's a John underscore Hickok 45 Instagram where I post some stuff. So please go check that out. And then I'm going to get back to uh, playing this country song. <laughs> ¶¶